In Genesis 17, we have a whole new, well, revelation from God to Abraham. It's, it's an amazing, well, listen to what it says. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him. So this chapter 17 describes God's appearance to Abraham. He's 99 years old now. 23 years have gone since God first promised to make Abraham a great nation, to give him and his descendants a land. And during this time, Abraham and this huge company of people now, they've, they've lived in all kinds of parts of the area. He's grown wealthy, he's prosperous. God's appeared to him several times to restate and expand on the initial covenant promises. So Abraham still only has one son, Ishmael, born to his wife's servant. and. Hagar's now 13 years old. Abraham and his wife, Sarah, they've been barren for their entire marriage. Doesn't seem like they even try to have kids. I mean, it's, it's almost like at this point, they, they assume that God's promises and God's blessings would, well, would pass through Ishmael. I mean, he's 99, Sarah's 89. They're well past the window for conceiving or bearing children. And that's when God appears to Abraham again. Now, this meeting is different than those earlier encounters. This time, addition to the familiar and seemingly impossible promise that God said about kids, he also gives a requirement for Abram. He says that he wants him to walk with him and to be blameless, and Abraham would be father of nations. Kings would come from him. And to confirm that fact, God changes his name to Abraham. Abram means exalted father. The name Abraham sounds like the Hebrew phrase for father of multitudes. The land of Canaan would belong to Abraham and his descendants forever and ever. As a sign of keeping this covenant, God had a new requirement for Abraham. He and every male of his household, born, bought, and every male and every generation to come must be circumcised. This is a whole new approach. That's already a lot of change for one meeting but God's not done. He truly surprises Abraham, telling him that Sarah's name will be changed. She will now be known as Sarah, not Sarai. And she and Abraham will have a son after all. In reverence or gratitude or pure surprise, or perhaps all three, Abraham falls face down and laughs. He's shocked at the mere suggestion of Sarah conceiving and bearing a child. He's just mystified by this. But God's gonna keep his promise there will be a son. His name will be Isaac. And God always keeps his promises. They laugh, they think it's incredulous. And sometimes we may laugh about some of God's promises, but listen, God's faithful, God's true. God kept his promise to Abram or Abraham, to Sarai or Sarah, and he'll always keep his promises to us. Some laugh and say and mock, the scripture says, that when is his coming? It's always been talked about, but listen, He'll come, he'll return, God keeps his promises.